This healthy living tip is brought to you by the Christ Hospital. There are four heart valves. Uh, there can be disease affecting any of them, either leaking, narrowing, or leaking and narrowing. The more common heart valves that are affected are the aortic valve, which is between the main pump on the left side and the main artery, the aorta. That's the aortic valve, so you can have narrowing or stenosis or leaking or regurgitation, as we call it. The second most common is the mitral valve, which is between the left upper and lower chamber. And similarly, you can have narrowing. Classically happens in rheumatic heart disease, which has luckily uh, been uh, prevented for the most part in the United States. And then much more commonly, leaking of the mitral valve, which tends to be uh, as a consequence of a genetic defect, so-called floppy mitral valve or mitral valve prolapse. So those are the two major valve conditions that we deal with, aortic stenosis or narrowing, which tends to be a disease of the elderly, and mitral regurgitation, which is in association with a genetic defect. Probably the commonest uh, symptom is shortness of breath. So somebody who develops sometimes pretty insidiously, sometimes pretty abruptly, breathlessness, uh, often, uh, if it occurs abruptly, let's say when you have a um, mitral valve, floppy valve, and you get sudden tearing of part of it, you can develop acute shortness of breath, which can actually mimic a pneumonia. So people have to be pretty uh, on their toes, so to speak, to make that diagnosis. Another time when you can have a sudden deterioration would be if you get an infection on the valve, so-called infective endocarditis. For the most part, uh, one can, by clinical exam, uh, identify where the murmur is coming from. Uh, if not, echocardiography or ultrasound of the heart is really the gold standard for both identifying the problem and, very importantly, also helping to identify how severe the either leak or narrowing is. And when successfully treated, either with traditional valve replacement surgery or by the so-called percutaneous uh, stent valve, patients improve their symptomatic status dramatically and clearly their mortality goes down pretty dramatically. So you can imagine, and we do see many patients who get back to an essentially normal lifestyle after successful intervention. I think we pride ourselves in a comprehensive, thoughtful team approach to both the assessment and the management and follow-up of these patients. Many of these patients are extremely complex, and I think what we have learned uh, is that it is critically important to have a team approach, namely cardiologists and sometimes interventional cardiologists for the percutaneous technique, but also surgeons. Uh, just to summarize then, there are interesting, newer, less invasive technologies for valvular intervention. One of those is the uh, PARTNER2 trial, which is uh, an trial looking at percutaneous stent valves to replace a very narrowed aortic valve. This is an investigational study uh, presently being conducted in a randomized fashion in the United States to get a handle on what the success rate, what the side effects, and what the ultimate durability of this very exciting new novel and much less invasive a strategy will be for a very common valve disease. Having come from an academic institution, it's pretty remarkable what the menu of clinical research opportunities are available at the Christ Hospital, not just to investigators like myself, but most importantly to the patients we serve in the community. For more information, call 585-1000.